it appears that the flush on the toilet of the flat earth is broken and is a floater that needs to be dealt with. Well, it appears I made a mistake. There's not one, but two things swirling around our steaming, smelly, flat earth bowl. Quantum Eraser and Nathan Oakley. But don't worry, I'll be kind. I will keep their little clips as short as I possibly can. They're going to show us exactly why they haven't got the first idea about what Coriolis is. And then I'm going to flush them away. Okay guys, well I value my members, viewers and patrons, so let's keep this short and sweet, shall we? Well, short. Let's see how quickly you can show us that you do not understand Coriolis, that you can construct a straw man and that you are proficient in the art of Dunning-Kruger. Roll VT. The whole point was the earth was rotating underneath the object. Well that didn't take long, did it QE? You don't understand what Coriolis is. Yeah, it's claimed by Globe Earth that Earth turns underneath things that are in the air, and that would shorten flight times. Well, it took Quantum Eraser five and a half seconds to demonstrate his lack of knowledge. It took you, Nathan, seven, because you waffled. Although in that short space of time, you did manage to construct a straw man as well as misunderstanding Coriolis. Yeah, so depending on where you are on a presupposed spherical Earth, the flight times would change in terms of how much they'd be shortened. Do you understand that the Earth is rotating beneath objects, causing, causing, you know what that word means, causing Coriolis effect? Oh, QE, you wanted to come back and show your stupidity again? Well, if you're going to make this argument, I would suggest 72-point Comic San, perhaps in a nice vivid pink. You want to still talk to this knucklehead? Well, to be honest, I'd rather not talk to either of you. But you're about the only ones left, as the Flat Earth is dead. I quite uh, enjoy telling him off. He represents every fundy who's ever ridiculed me ever. And apparently that's tolerable, so I'm just going to behave like that to him when he's wrong. And I'm justified in pointing out how wrong he is and why he's wrong, with everyone around me providing him with citations exactly how he's wrong. Because apparently, because drones don't drift away a thousand miles on the equator, according to him, that means it's not part of the claim. No, because drones don't drift away on the equator, the claim is debunked. Not that you don't make the claim anymore. It's still definitely a globe Earth claim that Earth turns beneath us if not attached. That would cause drones to drift away a thousand miles an hour on the equator. It doesn't happen. So he's saying because it doesn't happen, that means it's not my claim anymore. Yet yeah, still your claim we've just debunked it because drones don't drift away a thousand miles an hour on the equator and flight times aren't shortened, which they would be if Earth turned beneath them. What well, then, Nathan? Here's calming image number 17. Some nice puppies. And breathe in, breathe out. Is that better? Right, let's address what you said. Firstly, both you and QE are saying that we claim that Coriolis is the world rushing away underneath objects that are in the air. It's not. Secondly, you seem to totally forget that Coriolis relies on conservation of momentum. And that's why aircraft don't experience different travel times going east and west. Finally, through all the crap that I've had to sift through on your channel and QE's channel, not once have I ever heard either of you actually describe what Coriolis is, even if you disagree with it, not once. So what I'm gonna do now is show you what Coriolis is and how it works. This next chunk will be available as a standalone reusable video to anyone in a few days time. Take it away Mr S. The Coriolis force or Coriolis effect is a fictitious force. It's not really a force but it does have a real effect. We're going to have a look at it with the aid of this wooden turntable. One way that is greatly misunderstood is that many people think that Coriolis would be the turning of the Earth underneath an object above it, like this. That, most emphatically, is not Coriolis. And what's more, it's impossible due to the conservation 
of momentum, which I think we need to look at now. If we take a tennis ball and just drop it, as expected it goes straight down towards the earth due to gravity. The reason it travels in a straight line is that the ball, the car and the entire earth are all sharing the same momentum, all rotating at the same speed. So let's change the momentum. This time we'll drive the car past at 20 miles an hour as we release the ball and see what happens. Well that was all very quick so we'll play it again at a slower speed. As the ball is released it falls to the ground at the same rate. However this time it's also got a forward momentum of an additional 20 miles an hour. It tries to maintain that momentum. An object in motion will remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. In fact there is an outside force in this case and that's atmospheric drag. The atmospheric drag is the reason the ball doesn't quite keep up with the hand that dropped it. So to compare the two, while the car is stationary, the ball falls directly downwards to the orange marker box. If we place another marker box under the point where the ball was released while travelling at 20 miles an hour, it totally misses. It's still accelerating downwards at exactly the same rate of 9.8 metres per second per second, but it has the additional velocity forward and it maintains that momentum. So having seen conservation of momentum in action, we need to take it back to our Coriolis demonstration. We'll start by marking our centre point, the point of rotation, and another point out towards the outer edge. Now let's say we want to fire a cannon from the outer mark to the middle. We're going to want it to go in a straight line like this. Now we have an issue in that the earth or this wooden disc are rotating. Now it is one rigid object and so it's rotating at the same speed but the outer areas are having to move faster than the inner areas to complete each rotation. So let's fire our cannon again from the outer marker towards the centre point but this time over a rotating body. The cannonball will fly straight directly up the screen but it has a sideways velocity due to its momentum it had at the start. That gives us a curved path. That is Coriolis. Coriolis is the deflection from a straight path that is apparently seen on a rotating surface when you are moving from an area at one rotational speed to an area at another rotational speed, but while maintaining your initial momentum. And that Mr Oakley and Mr Q random font E is all there is to it. So forget all this drift nonsense, you don't understand what you're talking about. Now if either of you still don't get it, I must ask you a question. Do you own any teaspoons? If you do, you need to pack them up in a bag, take them back to the shop and when they ask you why you're returning them, tell them that you're too stupid to be trusted in their safe usage. Hope you've all enjoyed this. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down. Oh, my God.